I bow to all the seekers of truth. Yesterday, I explained to you that this power lies within you, is your own power. And once it is manifested, you will know how great you are. Just now you are just thinking that you are an ordinary human being. But once you are connected to the mains, then you realize what you are. Like this instrument is, without it is connected to the mains, it has no meaning. And then you understand your meaning. From human level to a higher level, you have to move to know what is divinity is. This is a happening, this is a becoming. Like a seed becomes a tree through a living process, you have to become the spirit. Yesterday I told you that I will be able to tell you today about the nature of the spirit. What is the spirit? Of course, English language, as you know, it has its limitations. Spirit means Atma, the spirit which is the reflection of God. Also spirit means alcohol. Also it means a spirit which is a dead thing. So, we have to now know only about the Atma, the one which is the Self within ourselves. When you are enlightened by the awakening of this power within you, then the light of the Spirit comes into your attention and then your attention becomes enlightened. Through our central nervous system, we express our attention. But in this nervous system, we have limitations. Firstly, we do not know the Absolute, the Absolute Truth. We live in a relative world. But once the Spirit shines your attention, you see everything clearly. For example, we are all sitting here, there is light, we can see each other, we know how to relate to each other, and if we have to walk or to sit down, we know where to sit because we can see everything clearly. But when we are not enlightened, whatever ideas we have are mostly mental or emotional, or sometimes coming, coming from our conditioning or from our ego, they do not relate to the Absolute and sometimes not at all to the reality. So you have to reach the point where you get the Absolute Knowledge. Like just now I am sitting before you, you all can see it, it's an Absolute Knowledge, you know that I am sitting here. But you will not know whether you should have divorce or not, whether this person is suffering from some madness or the other person who calls himself a guru is a real guru or a false guru, you will not know. By reasoning, you will not know. By rationality, you will not know. You cannot find out about a person through rationality. So, there must be some method by which we can get the proof of what is there really existing. So when the attention gets enlightened, you have felt the other day the cool breeze on your fingertips and you felt the cool breeze out of your fontanel bone area. This is the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost, I said. And the Holy Ghost is this all-pervading power which is reflected in us as this Kundalini. 
So when you know the absolute, then you can feel it on your fingertips, your own centers and centers of another person, so that you become collectively conscious. Means your consciousness develops a new awareness where you are collectively conscious. You know about yourself and you know about others. Now you have to only know how to correct the centers which you have found out to be out of place or something wrong with them or constricted. If you know how to do it, then you can get cured and you can cure other people, not only physical but also mental, emotional and spiritual level. All this could be done very easily by you once you get your Self-realization. Without that, you cannot do it because you do not have the idea of the inner problem that exists. Supposing there's a tree which is sick and you want to treat it, no use treating that tree through the leaves, through the branches, through the fruits or through the flowers. Best thing is to go to the roots and this is the knowledge of the roots. We have the knowledge of the tree. This great civilization has grown so big but it has not found out its roots as yet. But as the tree was growing so big, also the roots were growing inside and this is the knowledge of the roots which one has to just now listen to it with an open mind as a hypothesis. So when these roots are within us, is described in the Bible as tree of life, I mean I am not telling something which was not described. Also this, it said that I will appear before you like tongues of flames and that's how all these chakras look like tongue of, tongues of flames, especially the Sastrara, the last chakra looks like beautiful flames of seven colors and they are burning so smoothly as if there is no heat in it but some sort of a peace. All this whatever I am saying has to have a proof and that proof you can only get when you transcend this human awareness into your spiritual awareness. So the first thing that happens to you that you become collectively conscious. The second thing I told you that you become thoughtlessly aware to begin with, means you can remain in the present without thinking. Whenever you want you can think, whenever you don't want you need not think. As a result of that you become a very peaceful personality. If there is a crisis suddenly you jump into that position where you are thoughtlessly aware. Like as I told you yesterday that if you are standing in the sea water, you are afraid of the waves. But if you get to the boat, you can see all that. In the same way, you just jump onto that state of mind. Mind is the wrong word I should say because you go beyond mind also. But you go into that state of being where you just see the whole thing as a play, you become a witness. You become a witness of the whole play and because you are outside the problem, you can solve it much better. Also you have a divine help by which you can solve your problems and the problems of others. So the third thing which is very important for the Spirit is that you know the truth. Put ten children together who are realized souls and tie their eyes and ask somebody to face the children will immediately show the same finger, all of them, supposing they show this finger. You go and ask the person, have you got some trouble with your throat? Yes, I have, I have a throat cancer, but how do you know? Because these children have told us. These children, what have they told us? Just the finger which was burning very badly. So it must be the cancer or could be some serious because it's burning so bad. And they start, children will start rubbing them and clearing them. 
when you know gradually through experience that whatever you are recording on your hands is the truth, then you start accepting it as the truth. Then your awareness, that is human awareness, goes to a new awareness called as vibratory awareness. When your hands are vibrating, you are feeling this cool breeze in your hand and you can feel your own centers and the centers of others. Sometimes they burn, sometimes you get a kind of a tingling, sometimes you get pins and needles or sometimes you also get a little burning. If it's a very horrid person, they might get a little blister for a while just to indicate. You become like a barometer, but you don't feel bad about it because you just feel it like a barometer and you know what's the problem with the other person is and also your own problem. So you know the truth about everything. You want to find out about anyone, you want to know about any book, you want to know about any kind of a knowledge, if it is true or not, you have to just put your hands and ask, is this the truth? Is there God? Many people say we don't believe in God. I think it's very unscientific to say like that, we don't believe in God, because you have not yet found it out. Unless and until you found out if there's God or not, how can you say that I don't believe in God? It's great arrogance, I think. So it's best is to find out. If you ask a question, is there God? If you are realized so, immediately you start getting tremendous vibrations. That is how it works. And gradually you don't have to see on your vibrations, but you just know the truth. You just know it, what is the truth. Immediately as soon as you see the person you know about him, as soon as you listen to someone you know about him, it becomes very clear and vivid. There's no problem then how to find out what is the truth. So you get all the proofs of it, all the proofs of it. Now the third thing which I have told you is the spiritual part of it. Of course, you become a witness, you become absolutely peaceful and the most important thing that you get is the joy. Joy is not like happiness and unhappiness. Unhappiness comes when your ego is hurt, or your conditionings are hurt, your emotions are hurt and you feel happy when ego is pampered or your em emotions are substantiated. But joy is something which doesn't have this double face, joy is absolute. So you start enjoying everything. For example, now see there's a beautiful carpet here, I watch it without thinking, and whatever the artist has put the joy in it, starts pouring on my, just like a soothing river Ganges as they say. Because I don't think about it, I'm just watching it. Artist must have involved himself with great joy to do it in an abstract way, but that all abstract just reflects on me and starts flowing down. This joy becomes then the main nourishing factor in your life. Your family life changes, husband-wife's relations change, children's relations change, relation of the whole Sahaja Yoga brotherhood comes absolutely spontaneously. I don't have to tell you, love thy neighbor, you just love, you enjoy the first time you enjoy another personality. For example, now they must have told you we are working in 55 nations. It's more than that, I think, but still 55 is all right to make it look all right. These 55 nations have got people of different nature, different temperament, different culture, different uh, races, different religions, and when they meet, 
They look so beautiful, they never fight, they never argue, they never think uh, of jealousies, there is no hatred of any kind. They do not value you, what your skin is or what your position is. Everyone feels that they are part and parcel of the whole and enjoy each other. If there is a problem, first, when I went to Russia first, who came there, you will be surprised, were the Germans, just came rushing to help me. I said, how are you here? Mother, don't you think it's our responsibility? Really, I was filled with joy and tears. So look at these Germans. And they became so gentle with them, so gentle with the Russians, that Russians were amazed how these Germans could be so gentle. But the feeling that they had, that these Russians must be brought to reality so that they'll have better life, like we are enjoying, they should also enjoy. This joy is so great that people want to spread it. As you know that I am a housewife, I have children, I have grandchildren, and I am very busy otherwise also, but I can't help it. I have to travel for this joy, because I cannot enjoy it myself, I must enjoy it with all of you. And it's very simple that you can achieve the state of your spirit because it's very important. This is for the emancipation for the whole world, because all our problems come from us only, from human beings. Once they are transformed, you'll be amazed how things work out. Also, materially I've seen all of them are very much helped, because they become so smart, so intelligent, so compassionate, so good, that somehow or other everything works out. I was asking them, is there anybody unemployed in uh, Sahaja Yoga? They said, no, in Australia, can you imagine? But in England, which is much worse, there is nobody unemployed in Sahaja Yoga. Everybody is doing very well. You ask them, how are you? Oh, Mother, we are swimming in the ocean of joy. All those complaints, all those aggressions, everything has disappeared and they have become such beautiful people, like angels, absolutely like angels, and you all are capable of becoming that. You all have those powers, just you have to get them and you have to desire, you have to desire and that's how it is going to work out. It is such a big subject and I must have given at least four to five thousand lectures in only in English language and many in other languages. So you can imagine that this subject cannot be covered in one or two days. But I'm sorry, I cannot uh, spend more time in Melbourne or in Australia also. That's my life is. But whatever it is, what you have to get is your Self-realization. After getting the Self-realization, Though the Kundalini has got out of your fontanel bone area, has touched the means, everything is there, but still there's a very small part of Kundalini, it's few threads of Kundalini have done that. And also there are problems with your physical side or mental side, emotional side, whatever it is. So it has to go back to correct you. It goes back to correct you again and again. So you have to only learn how to make this connection perfect and whole being to be purified. Now for that you don't have to go to Himalayas or do any kind of penance, sacrifice, fasting, nothing. It's not needed at all. Only thing, you have to come to the collective. We have very simple type of collective because we don't take money or anything. You can't pay for it. It's so invaluable that you can't pay. How much will you pay? How much do we pay to Mother Earth for these beautiful flowers? can't pay for it. So people who are Sahaja Yogis have some, some or other gathered a little money and they have a little place where they are having meditation for them. It's a humble place. You should humble down and come there 
and join the collective. Once you join the collective, you'll be amazed that you'll be cleansed automatically. Automatically you'll be cleansed. Also they'll tell you how to meditate at home. Just try and you'll be amazed that you are really glorious, you are really beautiful and there is a purpose to our life. We are not born just by chance. There's a very big purpose and when you discover that, you know your value and your identity. So may God bless you. I'm very happy today you are all here. We should uh, now have the session for meditation by which I'm sure you all can get your realization. I have no doubts about it. You see, I can go on talking for hours, but I think talking is not going to help. But some people have questions, I don't mind answering the questions. But the questions should be relevant, please, and should be such that you really desire to have your Self-realization. Because I'm not here to take anything from you. It's your own property, everything, I may just give you the key. And if you ask me any questions, of course, I'm quite an expert now because I've been doing this for the last 21 years, so I'm quite an expert. But even if I answer your question, that doesn't guarantee that you'll get your Realization, doesn't guarantee. It's just a mental feat. So what you have to think of is of your Self-realization, that you should all get it. That is to be desired. Doesn't appear to be any questions, Sri Mataji. Hmm? There are no questions at the I'm moment. sure. <laughs> All right. The wonderful people, really. This time I'm really meeting very beautiful people in Australia. Really, I must tell you. Even in Perth, there were such nice people, all of them got Realization. And yesterday also you saw how everybody got Realization. But now the connection has to be established permanently. For that you have to give some time. That's the main thing, we don't give any time to ourselves. After all, we have these watches all the time to save the time but to save the time to waste it. We have to give little time to ourselves, to our Realization, and morning and evening, say five minutes in the morning and ten minutes in the evening, if you do meditation at home, is all right. Once a week they meet where you can go, they'll give you all the necessary information that you want, whatever you want, and you don't have to pay anything. If they ask any money, you let me know. They will never ask. So at the very outset, I have to tell you that I respect your freedom. Human beings have been given freedom to choose and I cannot force on you Self-realization, no, I cannot, it cannot be done. So you have to have that desire within you and Kundalini is the power of pure desire within you because all other desires are never satiable in general. So you have to have desire within you that you want to have your Realization. Now the first condition is that you have to be absolutely self-confident. You shouldn't have diffidence about yourself. How can I get it? How will it work it out? We have so many ideas about ourselves and we start judging ourselves. Please don't judge yourself. Your Kundalini will judge and she will tell you what is wrong with you and she will manage you. 
She has been waiting all these years to give you the second birth. She is your mother. She will find her way and she will manage everything. You don't have to trouble yourself and tell yourself that this is wrong with me, that is wrong with you. So first of all, you must have full self-confidence that we are going to get Self-realization and that we are going to grow completely into our spiritual awareness. You have, please, that confidence in yourself. Whatever you might have done, forget it at this moment. You have to be in the present and here you are perfectly all right and suitable for your ascent. The another thing is that you don't have to think you are guilty. This is also another, I think like a fashion, everybody feels guilty. What is there to feel guilty? What wrong have you done? After all, you are human beings. If the human beings make mistakes, what's wrong with that? You are not gods. If you have done mistakes, it's all right. Forget about it, but don't feel guilty. If you feel guilty, then this center here on the left side catches, which is a terrible center because it gives you horrible diseases like angina, it gives you spondylitis, also it gives you lethargic organs. So please don't feel guilty. I don't know how this idea came into the people who were in charge of religion and God that you all should feel guilty. Is wrong. Absolutely wrong. That you should suffer, this is another wrong. Christ has suffered for us. Are we going to suffer more than Him? We don't have to suffer. All these ideas must be that you suffer, you fast and give us the money. Must be that. I just can't understand. Why to tell somebody to suffer? Because God Almighty is your Father and He is the essence of fatherhood. He is the greatest father you could think of. And how can any loving father want his children to suffer? Logically you must understand this. Why should you suffer? He has created all this beautiful world for you. You should not suffer at all. So the idea of suffering has to go away. It's becoming too much these days the way people are taking to sufferings for nothing at all. There are so many such principles uh, which are being sold in the market that you have to suffer. And this was one in England which came to say that you must go to Gobi Desert. Now Gobi Desert, if you go, you will get Nirvana according to, of course you will die, that's the Nirvana you will get, no doubt. The simple thing is to go to Gobi Desert without any water, it, within say five, six minutes you will die, there's nothing will be left out of you. So there's nothing to uh, suffer but it's just a straight forward march to your death, that's all. So all these nonsensical ideas are to be given up. Nobody has to suffer, nobody has to think that they have to fast. Of course if you want to fast for your health, or this is different, but not for God. It's something uh, so absurd and ridiculous to make someone suffer, to tell somebody that you are a sinner, is all absolutely very uh, cruel also, extremely cruel. While this all-pervading power is the love of God. He loves us. This is what we should see in any person who talks of God or talks of religion. That's what they all said, but the religions have gone, you know where they have gone to. Because they didn't seek the truth, they didn't seek the Spirit. If they had deviated, they are responsible for such a thing. They need not have done all this, they should have really found out what is reality. But they were very much against people who found out and tortured them, troubled them, killed them, did all kinds of things. But now they cannot do anything because now this all-pervading power has become dynamic. It looks after, it protects, it worries about. 
No one can touch you. Those days are gone when saints had to suffer. So just now, in short, you have to be very pleasantly placed towards yourself, not to be angry with yourself or anything. Just to be very pleasantly placed that you are a human being, at the epitome of evolution, and that you have to just travel a little more to reach there. All right. The third condition, which is also another very simple one, is this, that you have to forgive everyone. As I told you the other day, whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything. Actually, you don't do anything. But when you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. But always I've seen people say, it's very difficult to forgive. What is difficult? Just to say, I forgive everyone, finished. In general you forgive, don't think of those people because by thinking about them also you play into wrong hands. So just forgive all of them, just try. It's very simple, just to say, it's a mantra you can call it. I forgive all of them in general, just say that and you'll feel much lighter within yourself, much better. Just forgive. Why to carry this load on your head for nothing at all? I hope you will fulfill these three conditions which are very simple. One is the self-confidence, second is no guilt and the third one is forgiving everyone. All right, so now we are placed very pleasantly towards ourselves and we are sure we are going to get our Self-realization. We have to enter into the Kingdom of God, how can you be guilty? All right, so now this one request is to take out your shoes because that helps you a lot to clear out your problems by the Mother Earth. She's very kind, she's the kindest thing that you could think of. Now, please put both the feet apart from each other because the left side is for your power of desire, ordinary desire. Kundalini is for pure desire and the right side is for your action. Now we'll tell you in the beginning how we are going to proceed and then you can close your eyes. I hope you are presently placed towards yourself. Now please put your left hand towards me like this, on your lap, on your lap very comfortably. You don't have to do anything uh, which is troublesome or painful, just like this. And the right hand on your heart. left hand on your lap and right hand on your heart. In the heart resides the Spirit. And if the Spirit comes into your attention, then you have the light of the Spirit and in that light you become your own guide you become your own master, you become your own guru. So please now take your hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. Now this is the center of your mastery which is created by great masters for you.
Now, please take your right hand, the lower portion of your abdomen, on the left hand side. This is the center for pure knowledge. Whatever you, with knowledge we have is not pure knowledge, but this is pure knowledge because it gives you the knowledge about the laws of the Divine. It makes you capable of working it out. This is the pure knowledge you should have. Of course, we have another kind of knowledge, as you know, is black magic, this and that. But this is pure knowledge of the Divine. Now you raise your right hand in the upper portion of the abdomen again and push it down. This is the center again of, as I told you, of your mastery. Then you put your hand on your heart where resides the Spirit. Now you raise your right hand in the corner of your neck and your shoulder and turn your face to your right. Now, this is the center I've already told you, when it is out of gear, you get diseases like angina. So don't feel guilty. Just now I feel all of you have this one the worst. <laughs> what is there to feel guilty? I don't know. Please don't feel guilty. All right. Now, you have to take your right hand on your forehead across. You can put it this way, that on one side your fingers, another side your thumb, and you can press it. Now bend your head slowly forward, as far as possible. This is the center where you have to forgive everyone. Now, please take this right hand on the back side of your head, back side of your head, on the optic lobe, and hold it tight. Now push back your head as far as possible. Now, this is the center where, without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, just for your own satisfaction, you have to ask for forgiveness from this all-pervading power of love. Now, the last center is the most important. Stretch your hand, stretch your palm, push back your fingers. Put the center of your palm on top of the fontanel bone area which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now, put down your head as far as possible. Press it hard by pushing out your fingers only, that's important. Now, push the scalp and move it seven times clockwise, slowly. Move it seven times clockwise. Please put down your head, put down your head. That's all is to be done, that's all. Now, again, please take out your shoes, put your feet apart from each other. Please put left hand towards me. You can take out your spectacles. Also, if there's something uh, tight on your neck or on your waist, you may take it out. Or say, loosen it, I mean to say there's something, just take out the pressure if there is any, that's all. Now, please put the left hand towards me on your lap comfortably and the right hand on your heart. Close the eyes. Please close the eyes and don't open them till I tell you. Please close the eyes. You can remove your spectacles also. Now here, you have to ask me a very fundamental question about yourself. Three times in your heart, you can call me Mother or you can call me Sri Mataji. Now the question is, Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question three times. Now, if you are the Spirit, 
you are your master. So please take your right hand, the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. Press it little hard. Here you have to ask another fundamental question in your heart. Mother, am I my own master? I have already told you that I respect your freedom, so I cannot force <coughs> pure knowledge on you. <coughs> so now, take your right hand in the low portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. Press it hard. Here you have to say, I mean you have to ask because I cannot force pure knowledge on you. Six times because this center has got six petals, Mother, please give me pure knowledge. As soon as you ask for pure knowledge, the Kundalini starts rising upward. So we have to nourish the upper centers with our self-confidence. So please take your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side, press it. And here you have to say with full confidence ten times, Mother, I am my own master. Mother, I am my own master or Mother, I am my own guru. The fundamental truth about you is that you are not this body, this mind, this ego, these conditionings, these emotions, but you are pure spirit. So now raise your hand on top of your heart and here you have to say with full confidence again twelve times, Mother, I am pure spirit. Twelve times, Mother, I am pure spirit. This all pervading power of love is the ocean of knowledge. <coughs> is the ocean of compassion and blessings. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness. <coughs> and whatever you may do, mistakes as to call them, can be easily dissolved by this ocean of forgiveness. So now raise your right hand into the corner of your neck and your shoulder <coughs> and put your head to your right. <coughs> Here you have to say with full confidence, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Please say it sixteen times because this has sixteen petals. Mother, I am not guilty at all. 
Please say it with full confidence 16 times. <coughs> I have already told you, whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything. But when you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands and suffer, torture yourself while the person who has tortured you or troubled you is quite happy. So please, you have to forgive all those in general who have given you trouble. <coughs> so now please take your right hand on top of your forehead, put it across with fingers on one side and a thumb on the other and now put it down your head. Press it and put it down. Here you have to say, <coughs> not how many times, but from your heart, Mother, I forgive everyone in general. Mother, I forgive everyone in general. This you have to say with full confidence, with your heart, from your heart. not how many times. It's very important because this is a very constricted center and if you don't say this and you don't forgive all of them, Kundalini won't rise. So please, you have to say it from your heart, Mother, I forgive everyone in general. <coughs> now, Take back your right, ha right hand on the back side of your head and push back your head as far as possible. Here again, you have to say it from your heart, not how many times. Without counting your mistakes, without feeling guilty, just for your satisfaction, you have to say from your heart, not how many times again I say, Oh Divine Power, if I have done anything wrong, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Oh Divine Power, if I have done anything wrong, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. <clears throat> now, stretch your hand fully and put the center of your palm on top of the fontanelle bone area. And here you have to push back your fingers and put down your head. <clears throat> now again, I respect your freedom and I cannot force self-realization on you. So, you have to move your scalp with a pressure seven times very slowly, saying seven times, Mother, please give me Self-realization. Mother, please give me Self-realization. You have to say this seven times. <coughs> Now, please take down your hands. Please open your eyes slowly. Please put both the hands like this towards me, little higher. <coughs> now watch me without thinking. <coughs> 
Now put the right hand towards me like this and put the left hand on top of the fontanelle bone area. The fontanelle bone area doesn't mean that you touch it, <coughs> but away from it. Just hold it, bend your head and just hold it and see for yourself if there's a cool or a warm breeze-like waves are coming out of your fontanel bone area. You have to certify. Please try to put it a little away from your head. Sometimes it can be quite far away. So be careful, move your hand up and down and see for yourself if there's a cool or a warm breeze coming out of your head. This is the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. It can be warm. If you have not forgiven, it would be quite warm. So please forgive even now. Now try with the left hand. Put down your right <coughs> head again and see with your right hand if there's a cool breeze or a warm breeze like waves coming through your fontanelle bone area. Now again, with the right hand. Again, put down your head and see for yourself if there's a cool breeze or a warm breeze-like waves are coming out of your fontanelle bone area. <coughs> now, raise both your hands towards the sky. Push back your head. <coughs> and now here, you have to ask one of these following questions, one of them, three times. Mother, is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Or, Mother, is this the all-pervading power of God's love? Or, Mother, is this the Parama Chaitanya? Is this the Brahma Chaitanya? Ask one of these questions three times in your heart. Now please take down your hands. <coughs> You'll feel very relaxed. All those <coughs> who have felt cool or warm breeze out of their fontanelle bone area or on their fingertips or on their hands, please raise both your hands. Please raise both your hands. You didn't feel it. All right, let's see. You feel it? She's got it, but she's not feeling. Maybe. Practically, all of you. May God bless you. I bow to you, all saints. Really, I bow to you. Most of you have felt it. There's only one or two exceptions. May God bless you. So beautiful it is.